What's up everybody? My name is Mark Rupin and I'm a landscape photographer based out of Florida. Uh, and here on YouTube, I create videos based around that uh, landscape photography. And that could be anything from behind the scenes photos out in the field uh, and all the way through to post-processing. Um, so if you're interested in that sort of thing, uh, I would love for you to join the family and hit the subscribe button down below um, and let me know what you think in the comments. All right, with that said, let's uh, get into the video. So today I'm going to take you through um, post-processing of one of the images that I posted on my Instagram account uh, recently. And um, I recently went to to shoot one of, one of SpaceX Starlight uh, rockets rocket launches the other day. I took a series of images and um, stacked them together so that you could get a uh, a sense of of the the rocket launch um, as a viewer. Here's the image. And let's get in the Lightroom. So here in Lightroom, you can see that I have uh, I took forty four images. Um, of the event. So started out, uh, didn't really have a sense of where I wanted to be. I was trying to, to line up my shot. Uh, finally here, around here, um, this is what I, I decided to go with. So you can see, you know, not much there. Um, yeah, each image was uh, 15 seconds, F5, um, ISO 200, and I was shooting at 50 millimeter. Um, I found that this focal range really gave me a lot of um, room to play. Um, so I had a friend there who, who does this a lot, and uh, I'll link his Instagram below so you can go and check his work out. Um, but, you know, he told me that... Um, it's a, it's a lot like shooting star trails. So if you've ever done astrophotography, uh, messed around with star trails, take those same concepts and apply them to a, a rocket launch here. Um, so started out with nothing, obviously, and we began the countdown. Uh, take you through, and here is the initial launch. You can see the orange trail going through the, the frame there and died out a little bit, goes behind the, the tree and you faintly can see it come back down right, actually you can see it better than this one, right there. So that's basically the end of our sequence and I took a few more uh, images for good measure. So there, there's our sequence. Um, the problem with that is that it's all single frames, right? You've got uh, about 30, 30 frames that uh, from start to finish that you're, you're going to want to uh, layer together and stack into one solid image. So to start that, uh, you are going to first select all of your images here in Lightroom. You can hit D for develop, and you can see that I've already started, uh, I've already developed these images to where I want um, them to be. And the way I would recommend this is select a, a, a photo that's in the middle of the sequence. Um, maybe something like Let's see. Something like this one. Not sure why it's not coming up there. Yeah, maybe maybe something like this one that has, you know, the brightest part of um of the entire scene, this orange glow, the, the rocket. 
and hit D and start to, to develop that. So uh, you can see here that uh, I'll just reset everything real quick. And you can see what I did over here on my history. So uh, the very first thing I did was um, I brought up my exposure a bit because it was uh, looking a little dark in my eyes. Um, I brought down the highlights, brought up the shadows so that you can start to see this, um, these trees here. Um, from there, messed with my whites and blacks a little bit. Um, something that I tend to do is a lot is bring up the, the texture and down the clarity. Um, and this was a little bit of a hazy day, so I did go ahead and bring the dehaze de uh, up a bit, and that'll help, you know, overall composition with the with this um, overall kind of bringing out the stars and, and that rocket uh, trail. Uh, from there, some vibrance. Um, I tend to go down a little bit on saturation, up on vibrance. Um, yeah. And then what else? I think that was, that was about all I did. You can play around with the, uh, the white balance. And, and if you like something a little cooler, that might be a little too cool. Um, but if you like, you know, the blue, you can go down on the blue, or if you like more of a warmer image, um, I tend to I tend to keep it around where it was uh, on the day of the shoot, what I naturally saw. Um, so there's that. Uh, and that is about all I did with this image here. You can also go down here and in lens corrections, check the chromatic aberration uh, that shouldn't mess up anything, but be wary that if you hit the, uh, enable profile corrections right now, it might get a little wonky when you try and, uh, actually stack these images in Photoshop. Uh, and then I'm also going to take down the sharpness. All right. So from there, we've got a, a good base for our image. Um, and I'm about done with my edits in Lightroom. We want to go ahead and right click, make sure again, all your, your images are, um, are selected and that the edit that you just did that one is, uh, applied across them all. So if you don't have this auto sync checked, uh, it won't apply to all of the, the images that you have selected. So then you would have to manually, um, select your image, you can hit copy, and then you can paste the settings to all of the images that way. But since I do have that auto sync, I, I'm not going to do that right now. And I'm going to go ahead and open layers, open as layers in Photoshop. So this is going to take a minute. Um, and what it's going to do is it's going to take each of those individual images and make those into layers into one Photoshop uh, project. So, so that we can then take those layers and merge them together um, and really draw out that, that rocket trail that we want, uh, that, that we're desiring in our final image. Uh, likewise, um, you'll also get some star trails this way, uh, depending on how you know, quick that, uh, that rocket was going for you, um, will depend on the length of the star trails. And then also if you started to, um, shoot way before the launch and continue that into way after the launch, you'll get longer trails that way too. Um, so we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll let this load and I'll pick this up once, uh, once that's done. All right, so now that uh, that's done loading, um, and the more photos that you have, uh, the, the longer that process is gonna take. 
So I think that took me, I don't know, probably 10 minutes or so to load. Um, but I'm running a lot of things on my machine right now, so your, your time may vary. So we've got all our layers here in Photoshop. Um, and you can see, you know, they can all be turned off or on, or we can turn off one at a time, whatever we wanna do. Um, and how I started this process was you take your top layer, <laughs> got my keyboard over here too. Take your top layer, select shift, select all the way down to the bottom and you're gonna change the blending mode to lighten. Boom. And just like that, you're done. Sweet, yeah, awesome. Almost. Uh, that got you, I'd say 90% of the way there. So you can see that you got your star trails now are looking good. Your rocket um, trail is looking pretty good. There's a few gaps here. Um, and that's the, the size of those gaps are, are the time between your images um, that you didn't capture. Um, and then you'll notice that a, a stupid plane went right through the center of my composition during this entire um, time. So we'll clean that up too. Um, so the way to start doing that is you can turn off all your layers and start from the bottom. And you start building. You go, okay, that looks good. That one looks fine. That looks fine. You'll start to see here that your, your stars are starting to create some trails. Now you might see a little gap in, in your trail, in your star trails, which is fine. Don't worry about it. Um, that's natural. But basically what you're looking at for when you're doing this process here of turning on the layers is you're looking for those planes, um, or satellites or something that doesn't quite look right. Um, that it is, it's a, the way I think about it, it's a temporary thing, um, that you want to remove. So boom, right there. Hold on. So let me go back to, you start to see, so you'll, you'll start to see, we, we've now got our, the end of our rocket here coming and here it is. It just came, um, above the tree line there. So let me just, you know, I'll zoom in here just to see. It's pretty hazy. Um, so I don't really want to mess around with that much. But once it starts to come up here, it's above that haze. And you can see that first gap. Uh, it's right there. So. You can do this a number of ways. Um, the way that I like to do it is by, you know, actually, let's hold off on, on this gap. Let's, let's worry about our planes. So I see, boom, plane comes in right there. Actually, let me, Can I colorize this? I think. Yeah, let me let me colorize this orange. And that's I know my rocket starts there. But I know the plane starts here. So I want to take a mask. Simply click the mask button on the frame that starts your plane trail. And you take your trusty brush and you just go ahead and brush that out. And you want to just kind of gently do it. Um, you don't want to 
try not to interrupt those stars too much. Otherwise, you'll create a gap in the stars too um, that are around it. And then just keep going. Same thing, next layer. Take your brush and paint it out. Now remember, with layer masks, black conceals and white reveals. So let's say, you know, back here, let's say you, you didn't want to actually, you, you messed up, you, you put some blacks where, uh, where you weren't supposed to, and you messed up and you actually wanted to put that back in. So you can change your, your brush color here to white and start painting that back in. So this is a good non-destructive way of editing. But I did want to do that, so I'm just going to put it back in. And we'll continue on, go around that tree there. Boop. You can see it coming through a little bit of that tree. Oh, see, that was a good, good place where I messed up. So if you noticed, I forgot to put in a layer mask and I actually just painted onto the image itself black. And if you remember that we changed the blending mode to lighten, since it was pure black, it wasn't coming through and it was acting like a layer mask, but it was actually destructive editing. So that layer mask is very, very important when you're doing this and making sure that you're painting on the layer mask and not on the actual image. Okay, so we're getting closer here. You can see that with each layer that we turn on and we paint that plane away, our rocket is growing. Ah, see, I did it again. Yep. Our rocket is glow growing. Beep. We're coming to the end. A couple more here. And last one. Okay, perfect. So now that we got all that, now you can, the way I would do this is you can either group all this and there you go. There's, there's your whole image right there. And I would just stamp it up. And from here, Really, that, that stamp up is just, you don't have to do that, but um, it, it's a good way, I think, if, if you want to merge later, it's, it's a good way to keep all your layers and the layer that you're actually editing separate. Um, okay, so now my goal is to work on this gap, closing these gaps here. So I want to zoom in. You'll notice there's there's some wonky things happening here and here that eh, I'm just gonna leave those alone for now. And we want to take our stamp brush, make sure it's a decent size, pick a section right before the gap, and line it up with that gap and just paint it in. And you'll notice I did this on a, a new layer, a blank layer. The reason I did that was so that I could take that layer and I could transform it to, to match exactly that space. And we'll just zoom in a little more. And if you hit Control T, you can see that our, our transform box comes up and we can manipulate this a little bit. Maybe even rotate it. Oh, too much. Rotate it a little bit. And if you really 
want to get particular with it, we can uh, we can really fine tune this little guy to match up almost exactly. So there you go. It's a little gap there in the in the middle is uh not ideal, but we could fix that. Again, we can clone stamp and just boop. And there we go. Kind of fixes it. And if if this haze isn't the color that you want or something of that nature, you can also clone stamp that a little bit. And I would recommend maybe making your brush a little smaller to do this portion and just kind of paint that back in on the other side. And rem reminder, you want to hit Alt to sample and then you just paint it in. That looks decent. And then I would do a new layer. Do a new new clone stamp here. And we'll just paint that in like so. And you can see I if you the good thing about doing this on, on layer on different layers is you can erase if you do a little too much you can erase it yeah it looks decent Okay, so there you have it. And there you go. So now you can either merge all these together if you want to merge them or you can group them and do it that way. But you can turn these off and on. Um, and see your results. And then from there, if you want to uh, keep editing this image, uh, you can save it back to Lightroom and edit it there, or you can uh, always continue editing in Photoshop and uh, export it out of Photoshop uh, and get an image like this. Um, so if you enjoyed that video if you got any value out of it i would greatly appreciate if you would uh smash that like button down below um and leave a comment on um if you would do something differently if you know of a different technique um and help out anybody else that might be uh, struggling with this kind of editing all right with that i will uh see you on the next one peace